everyone. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. We have with Delphi Bor Boric, Boric, sorry. <laughs> um, Delphi yeah. is a NYC based actor who was born in Tokyo, Japan before she moved to England and then eventually the US and she attended Syracuse University where she earned her BFA in musical theater. And Delphi has played Disney princesses such as Belle in Beauty and the Beast, Ella in Cinderella and Ariel in The Little Mermaid. And she's currently in rehearsals preparing to play Emily Webb in Our Town. So hi Delphi, how are you? <laughs> I'm great, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. It's, you know, just following your performing journey, it seems like you've been everywhere, you know, from Texas to now Missouri. Um, and it's just been really fun to kind of follow along with your journey. So um, just getting started. My first question is like, when did you start, you know, loving performing? And when did you realize you wanted to pursue it as a career? Yeah, um, great question. I have always loved performing. I think there's like really never a time in my life when I didn't love musical theater. And my um, my dad was a big part of that. He also loves performing. <laughs> um, so I grew up watching him do community theater, but he also introduced me to like so many great movie musicals. Um, and I just grew up watching them constantly. And so, yeah, there was, it felt like there was never really a question, even in high school, where I got to a point where I was like, okay, you really have to start deciding what you're going to do in college. And I just didn't, I didn't even think about it. I just knew I wanted to do theater and and that was it really. Yeah. <laughs> but very young. It's kind of been a lifetime thing, I guess, for you. Exactly. Uh, and then I guess moving on to you know, last year I came to the realization that you were in the Tuts production of The Little Mermaid as Ariel. And so I was wondering like, how did you get involved? Cause obviously we know you played Belle at the same theater um, in years prior and just kind of what was the audition process like and what was your re reaction to getting the job? Um, so I was actually supposed to do uh, Cinderella at a different theater, and um, that was pretty much like the the job that I had within, I think, like three or four months of the pandemic starting. I auditioned because, you know, everyone was hopeful that in the fall of 2020 that we would be doing theater again. And um, so I had this job for a couple years and it or I guess a year and it um, that's kind of really what I was like going after like you know in the in the midst of the pandemic where everything feels kind of hopeless you're hanging on to the job you do have and was fully prepared to do that and then uh i just got a call one day from my agents and said hey tuts um where i had done beauty and the beast is um wondering if you're available for the little mermaid and so I said, uh, oh boy, like I have a really busy weekend. I'm going to be out of town because I'm going to a wedding. And, um, you know, when do they need the audition tape by? Because I'm, I'm kind of crunched for time. Mm -hmm. And they were like, ah, they just want you to do it. So I got really, really lucky with that one. Um, yeah, the, the jobs that I've had since coming back from the pandemic have uh, pretty much been just like word of mouth. Um, just people thinking of me and, and I'm really grateful um, that I've just had these amazing, amazing theaters seem to like me as much as I, as I love working them with them. So yeah, that's, that's how Little Mermaid yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah. Cause I remember like the first time I heard your name and saw a video of you performing was when Tuts had put on their TikTok, um, the video of you seeing Beyond My Wildest Dreams. And I was just like in awe. I was like, oh my God. Cause I was in um, the same show, just like a small community production. But I was like, wait, that's kind of what's happening like right now. Um, and I remember I like showed it to everybody. I was like, look at this. Um, and it just felt so cool to see, you know, an Asian American performer as the lead in this production. Um, and for you, like, I know it kind of blew up a little bit, like did the online support for your performance just kind of help propel you forward for, you know, the run that you guys did have? And like, did it give you a sense of pride in your portrayal? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely it was, first of all, I don't, I'm not on TikTok. Like I have a TikTok solely because of, of those videos that Tuts was putting out. And I just wanted to be able to see what they were putting out there. Yeah. But, um, that one almost didn't make the cut. That was, that was one that was kind of, um, like on the back burner a little bit. And so when they posted it and, uh, 
you know, it was on Instagram and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like the, it really was one of my favorite, favorite moments of the show. Um, and I had sung the song in college, but never felt really like confident about it, or I had never felt like I had nailed it. And so, you know, I was really scared of that song coming into, <laughs> coming into the show. So to have that footage of me doing it and feeling like I, I, you know, did a good job with it makes me feel really proud of myself. And then I didn't know it was actually blowing up on TikTok until our social media <laughs> coordinator told me. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I read the comments and, and was really, really um, touched, really grateful for everyone who has supported me and, and that video specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I didn't realize how like viral it was. <laughs> I really didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember it was coming up on everyone's for you pages. And then yeah. uh, you know, with the with the cartwheel that is at the end of the song on like the biggest note like possible, like what was your reaction to that proposal and kind of how did you, you know, prepare physically, mentally just for that moment in the show? <laughs> it's so funny because that just really started off as such a like. Uh, Dan Connect is our amazing director. It was just like, you know, I feel like I want her to do a cartwheel here. And I was like, <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah. So I did it in a different spot where I wasn't singing, like in a little musical interlude. And he was like, can you do it on that last note? And immediately <laughs> my brain was like, no, I can't do that. Are you kidding me? But then I, at some point I just went for it and then <laughs> it stayed in the show. So yeah, it was a, it was a surprise. I didn't, I didn't think I could do that. <laughs> so I remember seeing it and was like, what just happened? I was not expecting it at all. And I was like, wow, that's incredible. <laughs> um, and then I guess moving towards just like representation and all that, like as a mixed race performer, when did you realize that you were kind of becoming, you know, a role model to young women of color and just people that see your portrayals and then are like, well, that means like, I can do that as well. And they're just really inspired with that. Like, did you kind of realize you were doing this or did it um, kind of just come to you once people started reaching out? Um, yeah, it, it became really clear to me when I was doing Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. um, well, I was on the tour of Cinderella for 10 months right after graduating college and I, I understudied Ella. So there was some of that um, just a little bit of it when I would go on or, you know, just posting about it and stuff. But I think Beauty and the Beast was really where it, where it hit home. And, and I started realizing like, okay, this is something that I want to go after. And this is something that I want to talk about. I really don't want to shy away from the fact that I'm doing this and it feels important and it feels bigger than myself. And that's what I love about doing princess shows in particular is, is it, it feels like I hold this place where because I am mixed, because I'm half, um, you know, white as well, that it sometimes can feel to me like I'm helping audiences in places where they're uncomfortable with uh, representation. I'm almost like bridging the gap in a way. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that that will lead to people who are, you know, um, Asian full 100% Asian performers and black performers and Latinx performers can really um, start to become the leads without any sort of like hesitation or or bridging the gap at these theaters that's that's my hope and I know that that's my function and I'm happy for that to be my function um, so yeah it, it feels really important to me and mm -hmm. The messages that I would get to were always so sweet and so wonderful and I, like I couldn't even believe that it was happening to me so yeah. Yeah. yeah I remember um after you know I came across your videos and stuff I was started I like looked up your name on um internet and there was like an article about you like living Hapa Lee after. <laughs> um and I was like wait she played Cinderella and Belle too and I was like that's yeah. crazy because um I just thought about this on my wall there's like a tiny ver like when I was like five and I'm wearing like a golden dress because that was my favorite Disney princess was Belle yeah um, and I usually like put my head over it just because it's like you know a tiny version of me so it's like kind of awkward but <laughs> <laughs> I love it yeah but I just remembered I was like oh yeah I that's me as like Belle I guess yeah um and just kind of you know being a young Asian American performer it's like you never see 
you know, an Asian person as like a Disney princess, unless it's like Mulan or someone who's like specifically supposed to be a person of color. And that's like the function mostly of the character is like, it's all about this one culture or, you know, just something like that. Or as like, you know, with other Disney princesses where it's just kind of a universal experience and nothing is real specific. Um, you know, in my opinion, I think with the ones like Cinderella, Belle, Ariel, like those are kind of just ones that really anyone can play in my opinion. And I think, Absolutely. you know, just seeing you get to do that is like, okay, now I'm like, I gotta go try and do that as well. Cause you know, everyone loves being a Disney princess. It's like a dream. And so, you know, just getting to see you um, kind of fulfill that really just helps me. I know helps so many other people as well, just kind of see that and realize it. Um, and I was yeah. wondering, like, have you received, um, you know, just with casting, like any pushback? Cause you know, the world is a very negative place. There is that we can't, you know, ignore it cause it's going to affect us whether, you know, we realize it or not. And just kind of, if there has been any, how do you, um, deal with that or just like respond or just like ignore it and try to just, you know, live on with your life. Cause obviously, that kind of negative space, yes, it's there and you have to kind of realize that, but you can let it affect you or you can let it not. So just kind of have yeah. your experience with that been. Yeah, that's an awesome question. Um, yeah, it happens at least once a contract. Um, and I think, you know, in some ways I'm really prepared for it every single time it happens. And then in other ways, like I'm not because in some ways, like how can you ever prepare for that sort of pushback yeah. and, and hate sometimes and ignorance that you get. Um, so yeah, it happens at least once every single time. And uh, the weird thing is like, it's usually based on I guess people's just connection to the films, but also it's like they're cartoon characters. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, so usually they're really ridiculous statements that are being made. You know, um, the one that I got from Little Mermaid was something along the lines of, well, that's not how she looked in the movie, to which I wanted to be like, she's a fish girl. Like she is, <laughs> she is a mythical creature. Like yeah. I, I don't know what you're after here, but I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm I'm not actually a mermaid either. So <laughs> like, <laughs> um, <laughs> so you know, there there's part of myself that's able to like laugh it off really easily. But what's really helped is every time it happens, I talk about it because I have to. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to just let them get away with it and and say nothing. And so I usually do some sort of you know, social media, just venting out my anger type of situation. And what's been always, always, always wonderful is that the theater supports me and makes sure that I'm okay. Mm -hmm. But then also my castmates yeah. um, are very, have been very, very vocal and have made me feel um, supported. Mm -hmm. And so th that's what gives me all the faith in the world that we're moving in the right direction, as slow as it might seem sometimes is 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 really just the support and yeah you know and, and to your point about like for us growing up it's you know Mulan was like the the uh, the amount of times that people you know you're playing princesses or you're doing anything like that as a kid and people automatically say well you're going to be Mulan and it's like well why why do I yeah. have to and I think that in in playing these princesses what's so unique about being a person of color is that we know what it feels like to be othered mm -hmm. um, and I can say at least from the three princesses that I've played they have felt othered yes um, so it's like not to diminish any white person's experience of playing those roles because we all feel that in different mm -hmm. ways right but yeah. but there's something about it for me that really especially being mixed that really hits home with this feeling of I just don't fit in anywhere and I just so badly want to find where I fit yeah. and that's and that's what those princesses are really going through yeah I think with most of them you know they just feel different they're not you know like their sisters or whatever and that's just you know obviously that's not discrediting, like discrediting any um, white person's experience. But, you know, for us, it's kind of something that's just ingrained in society. So it's not something right. that, you know, was put, it's just been pushed onto us as something, 
you know, that we had no control over, there's nothing we could do about it. And so we just kind of have to take it um, and deal with it. And so with, you know, auditioning for stuff, you know, as an actor, you're already always, you know, doing, submitting for tapes or anything like that. Um, you know, with rejection, do you ever like, for me, I'm kind of, you know, I'm in a small community right now, you know, in high school preparing to go to college and, you know, to start pursuing it as a career. Um, and, you know, if you submit something and then you don't get it, you're, you kind of just think like, oh, was it cause, you know, of my, like my ethnicity or anything like that? Like, I really can't help that emotion just for some reason. Um, yeah. And it's, you know, it's a valid thing. Um, right. Just, you know, going out for roles that are not traditionally played by people of color. Um, and, you know, just getting rejected, you're like, okay, was this why? Was it me or my talent or anything like that? Um, like, do you just have any advice or do you feel the same way? Just kind of, you know, because that's a thing that does still happen in this world. We are making strides towards um, better representation, but there is still a long way to go. <laughs> um, Absolutely. And it affects yeah. really everything. Yeah, I, well, first thing I'll say is that it's definitely harder in high school. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you have to like see it happen in front of you, right? Like if I don't get a job, I'm not flying to wherever the job is to like <laughs> go see the product. I like, I'm not. And yeah, especially when you audition at the volume that you audition at, like, you know, once you're in the real world, mm -hmm. it's like, it's easier to kind of just let go of things and just be like, yeah. oh, okay, what? you know, there are certain jobs that hurt when you don't get them because you get so attached. Mm -hmm. And I know that feeling very well, but, um, yeah, I, I guess that like, I guess that I don't like to assume that the reason I didn't get it was because I look the way I do. Yeah. And maybe that's like naive of me. I really don't know, but I feel like I don't really have as much proof yet that, that it is because of that. I don't think that's yeah. ever happened to me. I can think of like one time where I think I might not have gotten the job because of the way I look, but mm -hmm. I don't know that for a fact. So I don't want to, I don't want to put that assumption on, um, what, what I will say strangely is, is I feel like I don't get cast in Asian shows mm -hmm. because of the way I look more often than not being cast in white shows because mm -hmm. of the way I look. Yeah. No, that makes kind sense. of strange. Yeah. But I'm yeah. not like full Asian. Right. So like, I feel like that's probably part of why I haven't done an Asian. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. It's yeah, uh, I think you know, with Asian shows. It's just a whole other weird thing, right, especially right. because it's like, you know, with Miss Saigon or you know, The King and I. It's like, yes, I'm Asian. For me, I am full Asian, but it's like I'm not that ethnicity. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just kind yeah. of you know, it's a different experience for everyone. And right. just kind of like, don't push those shows towards people of, you know, Asian descent just because of that. Like there's, it's kind of, you know, there is, everybody's different and everyone's experience is different. And like yeah. those shows are just kind of interesting to look at <laughs> in a way. And I, and I graduated, I graduated the year of Hamilton. Mm -hmm. And so there was this whole thing that started happening because of Hamilton. Yeah. where people were suddenly really interested in people of color, right? Yeah. And so since I've graduated, I really haven't had a lot of like, no, you can't do this because of this. Like it's been a little bit more inviting than I know other people have experienced. And again, like I, I might be naive in saying that because, but truly that is my experience. Like I have not, I've been lucky enough to not have that happen to me at least not to my knowledge <laughs> so it might be happening I just don't know about it <laughs> yeah and like you know just the um when you were in high school um you know where it's a much more direct like experience did you do a lot of high school shows and things in like mm -hmm. your community when you were yeah <laughs> or no yeah uh, like just in high school <laughs> yeah um yeah our high school drama department was really big and really great mm -hmm. and so yeah pretty much from freshman year I was doing was doing shows <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think for me I'm like still trying to get to like one high school show just because the pandemic kind of messed a lot of the stuff up right. and, so like, right. and you know the shows which is like 
you know, kind of missing that signature high school theater experience. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. tough. Yeah, no, it's kind of a weird thought to think about. I was like, yeah, oh yeah, that totally happened. Mm -hmm. um, and moving back to like um, just the roles that you've played, I was just wondering, was it hard to see yourself in these roles until you actually began playing them? Uh, for me, always. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I always, you know, it, it might be just where I'm at with my like journey of like self-confidence, but yeah, I just, I, I think I see the roadblocks for myself before I see the ways that I could be great at doing mm -hmm. something. And so I'm the type of person, it's probably why I'm not like the biggest fan of auditions. It's just that like, I, I really, I know that like, if you give me a rehearsal process, I can really work my way to finding all of the like different and special things that I can do with something. But with an audition, it's, it, I get really scared and nervous and, um, yeah, so it it's tough, but I guess like the way I try to not let the way I look be one of those things that gets in the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, because for me, it's I always see the value in having a person of color playing a role that other people wouldn't think of putting a person of color in. And so, again, that's like way more important. It's it's way beyond me to to even let that be an issue yeah. not that it never isn't but you know. yeah I think you um you know from what I've seen it seems like you take that like you know that is something you know aspect that will affect you but you don't let that be the only like defining reason why you know you'd be cast in that because obviously you know all the roles you've played like you've been amazing in all of them and like totally perfect so it's like it's like uh, yeah she is a person of color but that's not all like there's so much more definitely yeah that, you know that. totally just overshadows the being a person of color just because you know it's like that's not the only thing like a reason behind any of it obviously yeah. <laughs> and we have we have stereotypes to fight against too right we have this whole like you know submissive quiet sort of stereotype that um comes across in theater, it comes across in real life, you know, uh, that being said, like people, people's expectations yeah. of who we are, what we do. And so I, I feel like I'm constantly fighting against that, um, whether it's there or not really sometimes, but that's, it is my favorite thing to do, you know, ethnicity aside in princess roles is just making these women really like strong and defiant women because I, I never want, first of all, just as a woman, they should never be subservient. They're not, they're like the bravest. Mm -hmm. They're some of the most courageous characters I can think of. Yeah. And um, the fact that they can be played very like waif -like and and conservative and um, submissive is just, has just never made sense to me. And so that goes hand in hand with being an Asian actor playing them, so. Yeah, yeah. And do you have any advice just for young performers of color who are kind of struggling to find their place in the theater community? Yeah, that there is a place for you in the theater community. I, um, high school auditions were so scary for me because it became very apparent to me that I didn't fit in mm -hmm. in a lot of places. And I still feel like I don't in a lot of different parts of the industry, which is fine because, you know, it's great to be good at everything, but it's also really great to be to feel like you're very special in, you know, a couple of categories rather than being just okay in, in a million. So yeah, I, um, I didn't know what anyone was going to do with me. I didn't know where I fit in. I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I honestly thought to, I truthfully, truthfully, even in college thought that I was only ever going to do plays once I graduated and I never thought I'd do musical theater to the extent that I have. And I'm very lucky that I have. And a lot of that is because I just refused to put myself in a box. I, I was told in college that I should focus on Miss Saigon and King and I, mm -hmm. and I just didn't, I didn't want to, yeah. um, I didn't feel like that's really where I fit anyways. Mm -hmm. And so I said no. And I, and, and that's, I think valuable to know when to say no um and to just know what you want to do with your life because it's your life it's your career and if people yeah. don't fit into that then that's fine but you will be right for something and that's 
still, still what I've been trying to tell myself yeah. is I will be right for something. I just don't know what it is sometimes. Yeah. And do you kind of have a dream role that, you know, you want to play someday? <laughs> I really want to do Into the Woods. I want to, I feel like I want to like age through it. So I want to play Cinderella in Into the Woods, but really I want to play the baker's wife in Into the Woods. <laughs> That's a big <laughs> one. Um, and I want to do more Shakespeare. I really do. I love doing Shakespeare. Um, yeah, I have a lot of, I have a lot of dream roles. <laughs> yeah, me too. Stuff. I know I can like go through any show and I'll be like, this is the one I want to play for this show. <laughs> right, right. And yeah. do you have a favorite role that you've ever played? It's so hard. Um, <laughs> I mean, Belle, Belle is pretty great. She really is. Um, I did Peter and the Starcatcher, and I really loved that show. I loved playing Molly. Um, and then yeah see I can never answer this question because <laughs> people ask me when I do takeovers all the time and I'm like I can't pick it's just like your chill they're like your children <laughs> and you can't decide I I really I really do find a soft spot for every single one there's not been a show yet where I've been like ugh, can't wait till this is over <laughs> like <laughs> I love everything I've done yeah no that's amazing I mean I think it's great you know just with every role kind of figure out you know, what parts apply to you or what makes you happy or just kind of those little things that, um, you know, are really good. <laughs> um, and like, lastly, what's something like non-theater related that you're really passionate about right now? It can be really anything. <laughs> Ooh, I, I'm very passionate about traveling. Mm -hmm. I love traveling um, and I'm very passionate about food. Yeah, I mean, that, was, that was like my pandemic thing was I was like cooking all the time and I think I might have burnt out a little bit because now I like maybe it's just that I don't have time to cook but <laughs> I don't know now I'm just like oh god I gotta cook but um yeah I'm very passionate about food and and travel and food and you know yeah and I understand the whole cooking thing it takes so long <laughs> yes, and the cleanup and it's like yeah yeah, yeah, it's a lot of work. <laughs> uh, but thank you again, Delphi, for just speaking with me today. Yeah. And thank you for being just, you know, the Asian American representation that, you know, I needed to see just because there, there isn't enough yet, which is what we're working towards and all that. And it was just so nice getting to hear about all your experiences. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I know you have rehearsal, I think. So um, you thank know, you so for, for providing this platform for people who, you know, need to hear from people like you. It's it's like the work that you're doing is really meaningful and really amazing. And to be doing it in high school is incredible because I wasn't even thinking about these things in high school. And so <laughs> it's really awesome that you're doing this. So thank you. Yeah, no, thank you again. I'm just like, you know, just so just filled with joy, you know, getting to talk about these topics is just so important and so pertinent to what is happening in society right now and all around us. And unless we address it, it's not going to, you know, nothing's going to change. So thank you for just sharing all about, you know, you, your performing journey. Um, and just, yeah, thanks. <laughs> thank <you laughs> I say thank you way too much, but um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thank you.